Consider it a gesture of good faith. Good faith for what? What you like call a team up. Welcome back everyone. This will be my full video for The Boys Season 3, Episode 5. There was a whole bunch of Easter eggs. We got way more Jensen Ackles, Soldier Boy, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. As bad as it seems like it's gotten for everyone on the show, things are only going to get crazier and crazier towards the finale. Careful for spoilers, if you haven't seen the episode yet, we'll just start at the beginning and work our way through shot by shot talking about Easter eggs and WTF moments. Starting with the episode title, The Last Time to Look on This World of Lies, and that's a reference to the comic book, Volume 4, Issue 4. They're basically just proceeding with the next part of the story in the comics. But remember, they are changing a lot of things from the comics, so some of the things are similar, some of the things are quite a bit different. Really, the big thing in this episode was introducing Paul Reiser as their version of the TV show's legend. He's a huge character in the comics that's meant to be a big Stan Lee parody. Like, he's a legend in the world of the boys because of all of his exploits, but also in real life. Stan Lee is a legend because he has such a history in comic books. The actual opening scene starts with Mother's Milk watching the tape of the Russians testing Soldier Boy's powers after they captured him. They reveal a bunch of big twists and confirm some of our theories about what really happened to Soldier Boy. Like, he really got sold out. They really tried to get rid of him by selling him off to the Russians without actually selling him. Like, Crimson Countess says that the Russians didn't actually pay them any money. They just hated him that much and wanted to get rid of him that bad. All meant to be a parallel for just how terrible Homelander is in the way the rest of the Seven think of Homelander. Like, we all hate you. Nobody loved you. Fighting a really terrible dumpster fire with another really terrible dumpster fire. Like, Soldier Boy himself is supposed to be something of a human dumpster fire. Like, they kind of reference that during the episode a little bit, too, when he's trying to reacclimate to modern society. Like, what the hell is going on here? The whole crazy montage here of them dosing him with high amounts of radiation, sulfuric acid, all kinds of things like testing his physical durability is just trying to show you how powerful he is that he can actually stand up to Homelander. Within the world of the boys, there have been a couple superheroes that they've had on the show that have been at that level of power. Like Soldier Boy is the newest one, but Kimiko was also meant to be super strong, super powerful next to Homelander. Maeve is also supposed to be one of the most powerful superheroes next to Homelander. But the whole idea is that Homelander is meant to be like a level above all of them. Like that's how much more powerful he is than everyone else. Even if all those other people teamed up to fight him physically, they couldn't overpower him. That's why they're using Soldier Boy's new special power, and they clarify what was going on with that too. It didn't just disable Kimiko's healing factor, it literally burned the Compound V out of her body. That's why she seemingly doesn't have any powers. Because of the other Easter eggs during her storyline and what's going on with Frenchie, I do think that it's meant to be a permanent kind of thing, and she'll have to find a way to get her powers back, but I'll get to that in a second. The bigger thing here is the threat that Soldier Boy now poses to Homelander. The way the showrunner explained this, the way they're using Soldier Boy's special ability here, is that it's meant to terrify Homelander because, like, who is he if he doesn't have his Compound V superpowers? And it also explains how they would theoretically be able to kill him because they'd be able to turn off all of his Compound V superpowers. Maybe. I mean, we think that they could do it. But like, for instance, Victoria Newman's head popping skill seems like it's not powerful enough to kill Homelander. So if even that's not powerful enough to kill him, it'll be interesting to see what happens when Soldier Boy actually tries to use his special power against Homelander. Like, they're building it up as this huge thing, but wouldn't it be a huge WTF cliffhanger kind of ending if he uses it and it still doesn't work on Homelander? In the comics and on the show, they really do want to make it feel like he is invincible. Later in the episode, Butcher also says Ryan, who's kind of like their greatest hope against him, won't be ready to actually fight him for many years. But the whole thing at the beginning of the episode with Mother's Milk yelling at Butcher about him not caring about anyone, that's right out of the comics. Butcher is meant to be portrayed as being just as bad as Homelander, just in a completely different direction. I've said this in many videos before. Like, even later in the episode, he winds up dosing Mother's Milk so that Mother's Milk can't throw their plans off the rails and try to kill Soldier Boy before they can use him against Homelander. Even though I don't think that Mother's Milk would actually be able to kill Soldier Boy if he tried. Butcher makes a Kermit the Frog reference when Huey starts throwing up like Butcher did when their Compound V powers wore off because they throw up green. The vision that he sees of Huey, I believe, is meant to be his little brother. Huey represents the innocence, I think, that he remembers in his little brother, so he kind of thinks of Huey as his little brother. So Huey threatening to go off the rails, getting addicted to this Compound V powers, might help bring Butcher back from the edge of darkness. But the whole idea is this is just the beginning. Like, Huey's gonna get way darker, way more addicted to this Compound V. They name Ashley the new CEO of Vought because they just fired Stan Edgar formally. They even did it on that fake Vought Twitter account in real life like, thank you for all your service, but he's going to be parting ways with the company permanently. The whole joke here is that it's just meant to be a puppet position now because technically Homelander runs everything and he just runs roughshod over this brand new board that they've appointed. 
The reason he starts to freak out, space out, the camera pushes in on him and things get all quiet is meant to show his fear that what Stan Edgar said to him is actually coming true. Like, oh, I don't actually know anything about running a company. I'm stupid. I'm going to end up revealing myself. There are a couple moments like that during the episode where he just kind of spaces out and he gets really pissed off at everyone because he's super afraid that he's not going to know what to do. Like, oh yeah, it's actually hard to run a giant multi-billion dollar company. And just to be clear, I don't think that Stan Edgar is completely gone on the show. I think that he'll come back before the finale. And the whole idea is that Black Noir seems like he's been more loyal to Stan Edgar than to Homelander. But it's basically the same situation all over the other parts of the company too. Like they fire their head of crime analytics division and name the deep as their replacement. And then he winds up firing pretty much the entire department. Like now it's the idiots running the asylum. Huey's honest about everything that happened in Russia with things going off the rails and about him taking the temporary compound B, but the whole reason why he lies about making their deal with Soldier Boy to use him as a weapon against Homelander is because both he and Butcher are afraid of people ruining that before they're able to actually kill Homelander. Like, they're that confident that Soldier Boy will be able to do it. Even though I think that that's going to wind up being a misdirect, like he'll probably still be too powerful for Soldier Boy to take down. Because it's all meant to be part of this storyline with Huey just going darker and darker and darker. And they want to show you how that's going to wind up being a dead end for him. Like you're going to wind up selling your soul out and it's not going to pay off for you. All tying back to the idea that Huey told her earlier that we have to be just as bad as the other guys in order to beat them. When really that is going to be a dead end. Like becoming as bad as the bad guys just makes you an even worse guy. And he's really probably just going to wind up getting more and more addicted to the Compound V. Maeve brings Butcher five more replacement files, confirming that they did run out earlier, but now because they have five more, they have even more than they got the first time, this is probably going to last them for the next couple episodes. When Butcher says that he's also been sober for over a year, that's meant to be around the time Becca died at the end of season two and they took Ryan into custody. That's around when he got sober. So the whole idea is that Huey is slowly falling off the wagon. Butcher also literally falls off the wagon because he starts taking a drink with Maeve, who also falls off the wagon after being sober for the past four months while training to fight Homelander herself. And then they totally wind up getting it on. Like Butcher thinks of himself as kind of trash. Maeve also thinks of herself as trash. Pretty much everybody in the show is probably eventually going to think of themselves as trash because of all the things that they're doing, how dark they're all getting. That's one of the funny things about the boys is that everybody on all the groups of the show are meant to be kind of terrible people at heart. The best thing about the show, like the most positive aspect of the show is meant to be Huey and Starlight's relationship, which is why I think that they'll be able to redeem themselves by the end. Like Huey won't completely go off the deep end. Butcher, maybe not so much though. They also reveal during this conversation too that they're having that they're kind of worried about Ryan turning into another Homelander, like being just as bad as him if they push him too soon. But they do confirm that they are planning to eventually use him as a contingency plan against Homelander someday, if it's necessary, which it probably will be. The whole thing with the Frenchie and Kimiko storyline is about her dream coming true. Remember, she kept talking about how she wished she never had her powers, and now it's true, like she got rid of all her powers, at least temporarily. That's the reason why she's so happy and they have that huge dance number to the Judy Garland song. Despite the fact that she's still really injured, like she's in a lot of physical pain, but she couldn't be happier because she achieved her dream and she found a way to talk again. If it wasn't clear, she's always been able to physically speak, but because of all of her trauma that she experienced, everything that happened to her and how she originally got compound V powers, mentally she had this block that just left her unable to speak. The whole thing with little Nina forcing Frenchie to come back into the belly of the beast, so to speak, into organization and start killing people again, doing whatever she wanted, I think it's meant to be a big choice for Kimiko down the line. Like she got rid of her power, she got her wish, but in order to save Frenchie from little Nina, Kimiko will probably be forced to take Compound V again, becoming the very thing that she hated originally. I think that's meant to dovetail with the whole storyline with Butcher and Huey in Mother's Milk about them not wanting them to take the Compound V because, hey, we're better than that. We're not supposed to be like these other superheroes. They're all terrible people. If we take the Compound V, we're just as bad as them. They confirmed that A-Train did inform home later on what Supersonic did. He really did sell out the team. Then they had that whole funny scene with Blue Hawk going full Karen when he confronts him on going after all those African-American communities. And he winds up almost killing his brother. So when Starlight is yelling at him saying that he did this for nothing, like he's not helping anyone, it's all meant to be his worst fears come true. Like he sold out Supersonic for nothing. The scene of Soldier Boy making it back into the city is meant to be a reference to Captain America coming out of the ice after all those years in the Avengers movie and having to reacclimate to modern life because Soldier Boy is very literally meant to be a parody of Captain America. He's just meant to be the douchiest version of Captain America, like a peacemaker type of character. So the big twist here is that unlike Captain America, he loses control of his powers with this big PTSD flashback, killing a bunch of people. And they also confirmed that back in the 80s, his team tried to get rid of him the same way that the Seven are trying to get rid of Homelander because both of the teams hated them so much because they were just so bad. 
They confirmed that Ashley's stepfather is one of these conspiracy nuts who totally buys into everything that comes out of Homelander's mouth. They kind of foreshadowed this in earlier episodes where he started leaning in when Homelander went off the rails. Like, oh, this is amazing. I'll believe anything that comes out of this guy's mouth. It's meant to be a big QAnon kind of reference, like this big conspiracy theory rant that they all go on. That's why he mentions the whole Facebook thing, and in connecting back to Stan Edgar's comments about having real power, meaning being able to control what people think. They also reference this whole idea when Homelander is later talking about the Stormfront stands, the group that she used to create all that misinformation on the internet that are calling themselves the Storm Chasers on 4chan. The big twist here too, and Homelander kind of calls this out, is that it, oh, it's not a conspiracy if it's all true, if they're all coming to get you. And that's kind of true, but not quite in the way that Homelander thinks. Like Stan Edgar probably does want to get rid of Homelander, but he himself is not responsible for what's happening right now with Soldier Boy. The reason he's back is because Butcher inadvertently freed him. Eventually this will wind up turning into a prophecy because later Butcher does get the idea to use Soldier Boy against Homelander. So yes, Homelander is a total nut, but he is a little bit correct, just not quite in the way that he thinks he is. Then like I said, they introduced Paul Reiser as their version of the TV show's legend. He's meant to be a big parody of Stan Lee in the comics, and he's more of an information broker in the comics. On the TV show, they're saying that he used to have Madeline Stilwell's job managing all the superheroes back during the 70s and the 80s, during the core era when Soldier Boy was really active. And at least on the TV show, the nickname The Legend was given to him because of all of his sexual exploits. Like he has all these jokes about all the crazy sex stuff that he did. The funny thing with the Marlon Brando jokes too is when he says he convinced Marlon Brando to take a lower quote on the Steel Knight movie, I think that's meant to be a reference to the first Superman movie because Steel Knight, Man of Steel, Superman. But all those jokes about Marlon Brando and all the crazy stuff that he got up to, that's meant to be a real life thing. Like there are real life rumors about all the crazy stuff that Marlon Brando did. That's one of the funny things about the boys, is the crazy stuff that they do, some of it is actually based on real life stuff. You also notice in the background of his apartment, he has a bunch of vintage posters, like there's one for Black Noir back in the past in the 70s and the 80s from a movie that he did. There's also an advertisement for the hero that Stormfront used to pretend to be, Liberty. She did Budweiser ads when she was the Liberty persona. They had flashbacks to it during season two. Then also, like I said earlier, this whole thing with Maeve telling Homelander, like, oh, this relationship that we used to have, I never loved you, I was always afraid of you, and I always hated you, is meant to be a parallel for everything that happened with Soldier Boy, Crimson Countess, in the payback team. So later when Crimson Countess is talking to Soldier Boy, she basically has the exact same conversation, plays out the exact same way almost. I didn't love you. I hated you. From the start. I hated you. Except Maeve is still alive, whereas Crimson Countess is not. The whole thing with Black Noir grabbing her and then Ashley saying that she's at the Global Wellness Retreat, I think that's going to be the show's version of Herogasm. This is the second time on the show that they've mentioned this. The next episode of the show is literally the Herogasm episode, which is why I think that the Global Wellness Retreat is secretly the code word for Herogasm. If you haven't read the comics, Herogasm is basically like the worst version of superhero spring break. It's a retreat for superheroes they have every year that's like the most debaucherous thing that you've ever seen ever. Make sure to bring a whole bunch of penicillin and a whole bunch of hand sanitizer. I love the super WTF but super hilarious Seth Rogen cameo scene with Crimson Countess, ruling that she's also making money on the side as a cam girl. But if you remember, Seth Rogen also cameoed in an earlier episode in season one as the director of this black noir series of movies. So I think the idea is that he's still playing that same character, but on the side he secretly has this big kink where he pays for all these cam girl websites. And he's just obsessed with Crimson Countess. If you didn't know, in real life, Seth Rogen is also one of the producers of the boys' TV show. He's the person that got Charlize Theron to agree to do the cameo scene as the fake version of Stormfront in that movie in the beginning of the series. When she starts her show, the song that she puts on is the Chimps Don't Cry song that she was showing to Kimiko earlier on the show. Then before things get really crazy, obviously they cut it short when Butcher takes her out. But they reveal a lot of our theories about what really happened to Soldier Boy. So the whole idea is that Crimson Countess knew everything about what happened to Soldier Boy in the past. Like she was in on it with Stan Edgar and the others because they all hated him and they wanted to get rid of him somehow. So they just sold him out to the Russians without literally selling him out. Like they didn't get paid for it. They didn't really know what the Russians were going to do to him. They just wanted the Russians to basically put him metaphorically on ice. Just keep him busy for this whole time. And it's just meant to show you how terrible people thought that he was and how Butcher is basically trying to use a dumpster fire to fight another dumpster fire, like putting him up against Homelander. 
Jensen Ackles said he had a lot of fun playing this character, but there were a lot of moments where he wasn't sure whether or not he'd be able to do all the crazy WTF stuff that the showrunner asked him to do. And the funny thing is, is the showrunner of The Boys was the showrunner and the creator of the Supernatural TV show, which is the reason why you see a bunch of Supernatural actors showing up on the TV show. Like, for instance, next season, Jeffrey Dean Morgan is supposed to have a cameo scene. When Huey makes the train spotting reference, that movie also features a lot of kids falling to addiction, like Huey is currently doing, getting addicted to the compound V powers. He's basically talking like an addict. That's how this conversation between them plays out. That movie also starred a very young Ewan McGregor, who is also currently in the Obi Wan Kenobi series that I'm doing episodes for with Hayden Christensen. Hello there. Butcher then reveals that yes, he's just getting as terrible as you thought that he was going to get, getting darker and darker, dosing mother's milk with a sedative to prevent him from sending things off the rails with Soldier Boy, even though I don't think that mother's milk would actually be able to kill Soldier Boy if he tried. Revealing the bargain that he makes with Soldier Boy, like we're doing a team up. Soldier Boy, I've come to bargain. Huey turning away from Starlight and following Butcher and Soldier Boy is just meant to make you wonder how dark things are going to get before they get better. But I think ultimately the show wants to be hopeful about Starlight and Huey because their relationship, like the two of them together, are like the one hopeful bright light on the show. Like I said, next week's episode is Herogasm. It is going to be the most debaucherous thing that you've ever seen on television ever. My full video for The Boys Season 3 Episode 6 will post next week after they release that. If you spotted any other big Easter eggs in the show that I didn't mention, write them below in the comments and let me know what you think they're going to do during Herogasm, like how are they actually going to adapt that for television. The real big news that just happened is that HBO also just confirmed that they're doing a Jon Snow Game of Thrones sequel series. So I just did a video for that. Click here to learn what's going on and click here for my other new Marvel Wonder Man Disney Plus series announcement. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.